Look, Ali, this has old, like old school. Oh, yeah, we got the dungeon look. What time is it right now? Hold up. We go. Nine and a quarter? Nine twelve. It is yeah. nine twelve p.m. on a Thursday night, right? Yeah, Thursday. Thursday night, yep. yeah. Um, and Kyle tonight is going to teach us how to Olympic lift in the gym today. So you want to give him the credentials on the Olympic lift? <laughs> I don't think we dropped all the credentials yeah. yesterday. Yeah, nothing, nothing really special. So when we first opened our facility in Eau Claire 12 years ago, we were an Olympic weightlifting gym only. Um, we had nothing but kilo bumper plates, which was completely different than any other gym around. And then we worked with youth and junior athletes to try to make U.S. Uh, national teams or try to qualify for nationals so in the in the five years we had a team we had a handful of athletes compete at the national level um, a handful of athletes break state records in the olympic weightlifting movements and it, it was a, a really fun time people came to the gym exclusively to olympic weightlift and that was something that was was really cool so we have a lot of experience in that regard oh uh, yeah and we're, what was it was the four tips of olympic <laughs> lifting we're going over today yeah, so so we're going to go over we're going to go over the foundations of the clean. So we're not gonna jerk tonight, we're just gonna go over the foundations of the clean from the hang position. So I was talking to Austin about this earlier. I, I think teaching Olympic weightlifting has about three tiers. The first tier is to a complete beginner, somebody who has no strength base, they haven't done anything. You get a, a young kid, young athlete come to your gym and say, hey, I wanna start strength training and I wanna start with the Olympic weightlifting movements. You teach them a certain way. You have to introduce them to position work, squat patterns, um, hinge patterns. Yeah, I don't even like know what that. a hinge is. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if you say hinge and keep a nice straight back, <laughs> hips and butt back, load the hammies. They What's my back? Yeah yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> so that's tier one. Tier two is an athlete who has a strength training base but don't have an Olympic weightlifting base. So they know how to squat, they know how to deadlift, they know how to press, but they don't know how to clean. Working with that athlete is a little bit easier. You can tell them certain things, you know, load the hammies, hips and butt back, nice flat chest, things like that. You can tell them those and they understand. Yep. And then the final tier, and this is one where most people don't get into this athlete, but the athlete who wants to compete in Olympic weightlifting. So in my opinion, and I talked to you about this earlier, my goal with the movement is to teach it as quickly and easily as possible so that the athlete can use it for what they want to use it for. Okay, if you want to use it to increase a certain domain of athleticism, if you want to use it to solve a movement problem, I want to teach you the movement and then get you into that domain as quickly as possible. Mm. And that's what we'll go through today. I think there's a, a lot of power in simplification with the cleans. They're not scary. They're not hard to teach. You can simplify it and get it into your athlete's hands very quickly. And what would you say the biggest difference between that second tier of athletes and third tier of athletes is? The, the details, right? Yep. The fine-tuned details. With, with your second tier athlete, there might be a couple of things that don't look perfect that would potentially cause you to not get a clean lift in competition. Yep. But in training, as long as it's safe and as long as the athlete is moving with conviction, it's totally fine. Going more stimulus for that second level than... Yeah, yeah. without a doubt. Yeah, that's a really good way to, to do it. And you're, you're using the lift to solve a problem. Yep. You're not using it to master that movement. It's not the problem itself. Yeah, yeah, yep. without yep. a doubt. Without a doubt. Whereas the third tier, that is what it is. Yep. Our goal is just to master that movement itself. And I think that's where I, I, I see that too with a lot of coaches like they get stuck in that nuance of the third tier and it, that, that's where I find funny it's like none of you guys are working with third tier athletes like you said and if you are then that third tier matters um, and if the athlete's interested or at that level or you have the time to do it then I believe that third tier matters but I see so many coaches stuck in that third tier of arguments yeah because it's fun to be stuck there and it's fun to focus on nuance but it's like and then but then because this is what happens Coaches get stuck in that third tier, and then coaches looking to use Olympic lifts are like, well, they're focused on all these small details. I'm just not going to use exactly. Olympic lifts, and they just throw it out the window. And I've definitely been stuck in that like trap myself before. Right. Yeah, without a doubt. And that's, that's why I think that the part that I talked about at the beginning where the goal is to teach it as simply as possible and get your athletes using it as quickly as possible is a really cool cue. You know, and a lot of times when people hear simple and quick and, and words like that, they're like, oh, you're not being safe. It couldn't be any further from the truth. We're going to be safe. As a coach, it's still your job to make sure that your athlete is using a load and moving a load in a, in a safe way, right? So there's no, there's no increased danger with Olympic weightlifting compared to other movements. You're yep. still monitoring all of their, um, their safety components as well. So. What? Okay, so I, I like asking this question for um, people that enjoy using the Olympic lifts. What's your, kind of throwing them on the spot here. We didn't prep these <laughs> questions. Um, when you're using Olympic lifts, what are things that the Olympic lifts give you that either other exercises don't give you, or maybe it's a bang for your buck type thing? Like, why are you using it for that second tier of athletes? Like, what would you, 
what would you use the the Olympic lifts for to for a stimulus? Like, what bucket is that kind of getting for you? Yeah, no, that's that's a really good question, and I think the way you answer it is going to differ for everybody. Mm -hmm. The thing that I really like the Olympic weightlifting movements for is it teaches athletes how to chain different steps of movement together. Yeah. Very rarely are you doing a sport where you can rely on one linear movement or one specific movement pattern. It's always chaining things together. Right? With the Olympic weightlifting movements, we do that with a clean. Something as simple as a hinge to a high pull to a catch to a squat. I mean, you're chaining four movement patterns together to create one sort of response. Yep. So I really like that component of it. And then I also like the fact that you do not have to be a really strong athlete to have a good clean. You have to be a, a proficient mover. Mm -hmm. So I think there's athletes who aren't particularly strong who have a ton of success with the Olympic weightlifting movements because they're twitchy or they understand how to move their body in space. So it's a movement I see a lot of athletes have success with without needing to be a big bench presser or a huge squatter, things yeah. like that. Well, that, that's one thing I've noticed with the, the cause I feel like I have meat headed to clean long enough to where I've kind of skipped the connection of it to where like, I'd like I was talking about where I get underneath it and just try to front squat it up. So I try to turn it into a simple movement problem, but the snatch, has really exposed that for me because it's like the, the last, I was talking about this, I think it was Tuesday. It's the first time Snatch felt that weightless feeling. Yeah. You know, like that you're supposed to feel sure. that I had for never sure. felt on any of it. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is like when your body's sinking and like, and I, I just feel like there's, there's pieces to that coordination and that, uh, the, the sinking up of the body that you see in like a swing or any, pretty much any athletic movement where it's, it's timing, rhythm, and power. Like all three of those things matter together. And I think a lot of times in our training, we focus on one aspect, which is the power or strength aspect without implementing any of the rhythm or coordination pieces in combination with those. And, and that's where I was, I was starting with the, the snatches and, and Will Rattel has kind of got me on that, that thought process a little bit too. But the snatches, when I was doing, it, I was like, oh, this is, this is what it's supposed to be yeah. like, you know, and, and that's why I like the snatch too. And maybe it's just because I'm so bad at the snatch, but I can't meet head the snatch. Yeah. You know, like I can meet head a clean, I can't meet head yeah. the snatch. And that's why it's been so fun to pursue that, that it's like when you hit a really good softball, you're like, oh, it's almost effortless. You're Perfect, like, oh, right. wow, what just yeah. happened there? That's what the snatch was. I'm like, that, that relationship piece has been really nice for me. Yeah, without a doubt. It's a, a really good analogy. I think, I think one thing with the Olympic weightlifting movements that people tend to do is they rely on their strengths, right? So if, you have a, if you're a strong athlete, if you're a really powerful athlete, let's say you have a huge squat or you have a huge press, you want to use those strengths to complete your snatch or complete your clean. But in reality, those don't necessarily help, right? The meathead analogy, I think, is a really good one. You can't meathead your way through a snatch because you can't rely on just your power or just your press. You have yep. to rely on the movement pattern. So I think there's a, a big level of body awareness in order to successfully hit those lifts. The cool thing, and, and you said you started noticing it last week, the cool thing you start noticing once you master that movement pattern is your PRs or your big lifts feel easy. Yeah. You know, very rarely can you use the word easy when you're talking about PRs in the gym, yep. right? Like if you hit a max effort back squat, that's never going to feel easy. Yep. You're going to grind that. But if you hit a perfect snatch where everything moves in a perfect line and we lock out at the bottom, we stand up, it feels it feels like, man, that was that was nothing. And that, that's the piece where it ties into the sporting aspect too, because when you do good things on the sporting field, it almost always feels easy. Yeah. You know? And that, that's that's like the disconnect I have with like PRs in the weight room of like a squat or a bench where like you said, it's always a grind. Like it's gonna be a grind when you're going for that PR. It's never like, oh, I just smashed that bench, you know? It was never like super easy like that. And, but when you do good things on the sporting field, many times, like the, the hardest hits I've ever had, the, the hardest um, swings or the best swings I've ever had, um, the, even the best throws in track and field, it's always like, what just happened? You know, like what just happened? That just, just you like, do, again, everything was synced up to where it was never, you're never fighting yourself. And I was talking about this in um, uh, a YouTube video the other day, but it's like, almost everything in the weight room teaches you to dissociate from your body. You know, like it's a dissociation. You go into something that is external because you don't want to like feel the, the, the pain, the, the squeeze at the bottom, the grind. So you just kind of like dissociate from the body and then come back up. And that, that's how you get really good at a squat where all of athletics is almost more of a, a the, the feminine side where it's, it's like associating with the movement, the rhythmic, the fluidity, fluidity. And the only thing I've recently felt that with has been the snatches for me. It's, cool. it's like that piece. So um, anyways, that's, that's a long rant. We didn't plan any of that. Let's, uh, you ready to clean? Yeah. Ready to teach yeah. me? No, without a doubt. And like I said, I mean, we could, the, the snatch, we always use this analogy when we were teaching it to our really young kids. We say, we're going to teach it to you as fast as you can so you can start using it. But in reality, we could spend 
10 hours going through the snatch, yep. right? There's thousand page books on how to Olympic weightlift perfectly. <laughs> I mean, that, that stuff's all, that stuff is all just nitpicking or, or being a little too anal about it. So like I said, tonight the goal is to go through the most basic and foundational movement pattern to teach you a clean. And the way we're going to load the clean tonight, we're going to do two hand cleans plus two front squats. Cool. So again, like I said, I want you to work on chaining movements together and working on patterns. And, and it's something where you can hit a really heavy complex tonight and it'll be a PR because you've never done it before. Right. Yeah. So what difference does it make? Right. And, and that's, that's what I really like about the cleans. All right. Let's do it. Cool. All right, man. Boom. Boom. Let's do it. So with, with tonight, we're gonna operate in that second tier of movement, right? Somebody who knows how to squat, somebody knows how to hinge, somebody knows how to get into good positions. That's, that's where we're gonna start. So the first thing that I like to do, once we've gone through our PVC warm up stuff, when we have an empty bar, the goal is to move the empty bar as if it weighs 300 pounds. Mm -hmm. We wanna move it like we would if it was heavy, okay? So a basic, and, and you, kind of, you kind of talked about it at the beginning, and I'll, I'll talk about it as we keep going, but with my young athletes, I always say there's four magic cheat codes to the clean and the first one is the hook grip do you know what the hook grip is oh yeah yeah, yeah. i've been dreading everyone hates a hook grip, yep. right <laughs> and and for for a good reason it hurts but the hook grip is an absolute game changer i mean the fact that your grip strength is never a limiting factor really makes a huge difference so i, I think you'll be able to see this on the camera but we take our thumb put it down and then you don't need to put a death squeeze on this thumb we're just covering our thumb nail with our middle finger something as simple as that and then from this position, the, the grip on the bar is still nice and light, but it's not going to slip anywhere, okay? So something that I really like to do, start in the power position, which is just a, a sink into the midfoot, hips and butt back, and we're going to hinge to right about the knee. And we're just working on a basic hinge right here. So we're gonna go through nice five of these. This is just a hinge. Once we're done with this hinge, we're gonna add a dynamic component to it. We're gonna do a hinge jump shrug. So from this position, we're going to jump and shrug. Our shoulders are gonna go into our ears and our barbell is going to float. So from this position, jump shrug, nice and smooth. Jump shrug, jump shrug, jump shrug, jump shrug, jump shrug. Good, the next step is a jump pull. Now in the clean, we're never actually pulling the barbell up, we're pulling ourselves underneath it but the jump pull allows you to get that movement pattern where the barbell stays close to your body and start to work through that. So hinge, jump, pull, barbell stays nice and close to the body and it'll look like this. Nice and smooth, nice and smooth, nice and smooth, working on keeping that close the entire time. And then the last step of the warm up is a jump catch. From this position, jump, catch. Just power, no squat, stand, return to the hook grip, hinge, catch, Hinge, catch, hinge, catch. Very good. Set the bar down. Perfect. So you got five of each. Five jump shrug, five jump pull, five jump catch. Perfect. Five hinge too? Yeah, five hinge too. Yep. Oh, you got any, when you go, you got any grip length that you're doing when yeah. you do the clean, when so, you teach that? That, that's a good question as well. I have really long arms, so my grip is a little bit wider than most people's, but I take my thumb and I'll put it about an inch away from that center neural line. Okay. You can go anywhere in between there. You can see this bar is kind of worn out because yep. some people do halfway there. Right there. It doesn't really matter. I say slightly wider than shoulder width. Okay, perfect. You're going here. Yep. We got the fancy Olympic shoes on. He, he hey, that's, that's, one, that's one of the four cheat codes. That's dude. one of the four yeah. cheat codes. We're gonna get to that. We got hook grip, we got Olympic weightlifting shoes, man. Shoes. That's worth 20 kilos. <laughs> <laughs> but this bar, you said this bar, Adds 20 kilos, right? Yeah, so, so I mean, PR by 40 kilos already. We <laughs> yeah. haven't even started our workout. So we got five here. Then what we got? Yep. Then we have a jump shrug. So from that hinge position, we get vertical and we just kind of drive off of our midfoot and shrug our shoulders into shrug our ears. Up. Yep. Good. Yep. And you don't even have to get any like, like big time triple extension. We're just working on being vertical. Okay. Nice and smooth. Yep. Then we got jumps. And then you have a jump pull. So the exact same thing. Jump, same thing with the feet. We shrug and we pull and we ride that barbell all the way up to the chin. Gotcha. Yep, very good. <sighs> Keeping the barbell nice and close. One thing you can do to your young athletes, if you trust them, is you can stand right here and you can say, all right, do it. Keep it. Just don't hit me. Very good. Oh, I like that concern. Yeah, That's nice good one. Nice and smooth. It keeps the bar close to your body. 
Okay. And then jump catch. Yep, and we're really focusing on moving our feet to our receiving position. So hinge, jump, catch. Okay. Feet move. There you go. Good. <clears throat> Same thing. I'm going to stand here. Don't hit me. Okay, keep that barbell close to your body. A lot of trust on this, man. Oh, dude, so much better. Notice there's no jump forward, though? Yeah, it's I mean, super there's, nice. There's zero displacement forward. So that's, so that's uh, I have that issue. I jump forward on almost all of them. Like, yes. I drift super far, so yep. that's good. And don't squat. You can. doesn't okay. matter. Just letting the barbell move. So, and, and you'll be able to tell when you watch this back, but the difference between the first one and these ones is night and day. I mean, we're, we're it not feels night forward. and day already. It's so clean. Yeah. Don't. Good. Yeah, set it down. Boom. Very nice. I'm gonna bump this camera back just a little bit. Okay. What do we have for camera? All right. Boom. All right. Good. Yeah. All right. So we're we're through our empty bar warm up. On days that you catch it in a squat, we'll add five front squats at the end of that. Okay. okay. So let's say now you're gonna pull underneath the bar and you're gonna catch it in a squat. For tonight, our complex is two hang cleans plus two front squats. You, you are very strong. You might be able to pull the bar and catch it high all the time. I, I'm not very strong, so a lot of times my hang cleans are full squats. I always catch it at the bottom. You do? Yep, okay, yep, okay, yep. perfect. And, and that's all what your athlete prefers and what they can do. Okay. okay. So both of us are gonna be catching it in, the, in a squat sometimes, so now we can chain that together. Cool. So pick up the bar. What, what we're going to do now is three hang catch plus three front squats. And then we'll do three where we catch in the squat. And I'll show you what that looks like. So hinge, catch, nice and high still. Nice and high, nice and high. There's our third rep. Now I'm going to my front squat. Notice I don't have a full grip on the bar. I've allowed it to sit on my shoulders. Okay, that's good. That's where we want it to be. And then we're just doing three front squats. One, two, three, good. And now we're gonna chain all that together. Hinge, catch, stand tall. Hinge, catch, hinge, catch. So three normal, three squats, three full. Yep. Done. And the verbiage, <laughs> you're gonna always start a start an argument here, but catching it here is a hang power clean. You catch it in the power position. Okay. If you just do a hang clean, that insinuates that you catch it in the full squat. Okay. From here. Good. Yep. Now I'll just stand in just to. Yeah, that looks that looks slick, dude. Good. And then three. Yep. Good. Now three catches in the squat. Oh, Keep, see, I let that you one felt it? I was yep. gonna say, yep. Okay. Good. Now this this is a perfect segue. Remember, I said there's four cheat codes to Olympic weightlifting. Yep. Olympic weightlifting shoes, the hook grip. Number three, this is gonna help fix your problem, okay? When I hold this barbell, just slightly rolling my knuckles down is going to keep this barbell nice and close. This way? Yeah. Okay. Roll them down, because then the barbell is going to stay nice and close when you move. If my knuckles are away, like yours were on that last one, then we tend to want to reverse curl it, have this style of pattern, and that's what pulls us forward. And what's the, is there a reason I have a tendency to go forward. Is there, like, what is that? What's that mean? Yeah, so, so the reason why you're going forward is a couple of things. With, with the clean, we want to get to a full vertical position yep. so that this barbell floats up and we pull underneath it. If you don't get to that full vertical position and the barbell swings out, we tend to chase it. Yep. Okay? So by putting our knuckles down and keeping the barbell close to our body, a lot of athletes will actually move back a smidge. Really? Okay. Yep. So from this position, Knuckles down, hinge, catch. Catch through. Yep. Nice. And when you hit it well, it's got to already feel well, like buttered. I even already felt that yeah. it's such a difference. Yep. No I was going to yell that for drifting forward. When I, I was cleaning with Welty last week, and he's like, you're catching everything super far forward. Yeah. And then whenever I catch it, it's, and then go back forward. Yep. Is there a reason, but like, why would I have a tendency to do that? Or why would I have an athlete? Is it uh, easier to get to? Like what, what's kind of the thought process? Like rushing why it. I, rushing it. Rushing okay. it. Yep. Yeah. So you're, you're trying to rely on your strength. More strength. Yes, exactly. Yes. Okay. Whereas if you just allow your body to move the barbell where it's supposed to go, it'll get to its highest point before you pull under it. Gotcha. If you watch some of the Chinese weightlifters who are really, really good, like the Olympic level Chinese weightlifters, 
when they pull the bar off the ground, it almost looks like a deadlift. It's yeah. so slow. Super slow. I've and been noticing just, that. They just hold on to it and keep it going. They ride that thing all the way to the top <laughs> and then pull underneath. Yeah, so that's pretty sweet. That level of patience is just amazing. Gotcha. All right, what do we got next? Time to time to load it up a little bit. Cool. Let's put a let's go 45 on there. Okay. And then we'll go we'll do our first warm up for our working set. Awesome. Let's do it. This is our first working set. Two plus two. Okay? okay. The way it works, we already said we're going to eventually do it. If you pull under and catch it, that's fine. Doesn't matter. You cool. can just go right into your squats. No big deal. Okay. Two cleans, two squats. Two cleans first. Correct. Yep. Yeah. And I'll show you. I'll show you what it looks like with the hang power because I I don't need to catch this in a full squat yet, but it won't be long. Okay. It, it won't be long at all. So nice and smooth. Hinge, catch. Hinge, catch, and then elbows high. One. Two. Nope. And just dump it on those pads. No, nope. big, no big deal at all. And uh, do you want to explain why you do the complex while I uh, while I hit these? Like, yeah. what's the reason for splitting them up and keeping them together? <laughs> yeah. So I I like doing a complex because it it gives an athlete an opportunity to navigate different types of movements. The other thing that's cool about complexes too is it opens up a lot of opportunities for success. If you've never done a two plus two complex like this, you have no idea what you've hit before. So any number you hit today is going to feel like a win. Yeah, yeah. So it just gives athletes a lot more opportunities to win. So you would, when, you, when you're programming this, um, you would do like a 2 plus 2 PR type thing, or like they would know what their 2 plus 2 PR is type yeah. thing? Yeah, and, and that's what's crazy about Olympic weightlifting is that you can have a PR for a million different things. Yeah. You might have a PR for a, a three deadlift, two hang clean, one jerk complex. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So the idea is that we, we get kids familiar with these complexes, and then in their head, they kind of have a rough estimate of what they've hit before. Cool. Yeah. Nope. All right, two? before we start this, I'm, I'm going to let you in on the fourth secret. You ready for this one? Yeah. Game changer. Uh, chalk. Chalk. You see gymnasts on TV, they always are chalking everything up. Yep. With Olympic weightlifting, same exact thing. When we chalk our hands, it allows the bar to stay in, and I never want grip to be a limiting factor. Cool. So chalk is, is the last one. You ever strap up with Olympic lifts? Yes and no. If I'm not, if I'm going to catch it, I don't. Okay. Because I think that it, it puts your wrist in a really vulnerable position. Yep. But if I'm just going to do pulls, I'll strap up. Okay. Yep. Don't. Any, anything to prevent the grip from limiting your movement. Yeah, I did, uh, I did straps for like one set of one rep and it felt like crap. So <laughs> yeah. I cut those. Yeah. And uh, I, am a, I am a father. I have three young kids. So the chalk that we use now is the exact same chalk that they draw. That they draw with? Yeah. That's pretty dope. It's yellow. <laughs> it's yellow. And, and it works. And we're not eating it, so the, the dye doesn't matter, right? <laughs> so we got two plus two still? Two plus two again. Let's yep. do it. And allow the weight to tell you what you need to do. If you need to catch it in a squat, great. If you can catch it high, great. Doesn't matter. Here we go. <sighs> nice. <sighs> Damn. Made it look easy. Yeah, yeah, and that, that's the goal, right? Make it easy and smooth the entire way. This is that. He's not, he's not lying. This is a crayon chalk. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That, that is yellow. Yeah. Straight up yellow. That's kind of dope. I don't have kids yet, but when I do, that'll be a... <laughs> Multi-purpose. <stuff. laughs> yeah, you got to save your budget, bro. Here we go. Same thing. I'm just going to stand here. I'm not going to crowd you, but I want you to at least think about moving that bar in a nice straight line. Cool. I got to go. Okay. Oh, that hook curve is going to feel gross. It takes a bit. <sighs> okay. Hinge. Hips and butt back. Beautiful. Yep. Nice and smooth. Good. That was nice and high. Good. Good. And on the front squat, Austin, did you notice what your hands are doing on your front squat? Not really, no. When you hold on to the bar, where does the bar sit on your front squat? With my hands or? Yeah. So the barbell's on your shoulders, right? Yeah. And your hands don't have a full grip, right? Yeah. Allow yourself to catch your clean with that kind of open grip. Okay, was I, you, was I squeezing like... Yeah, okay. yeah. And what that happens is it prevents our arms from getting up and it just it puts us in like an, kind of an awkward Weird catch one. position. Especially on the second rep, if you can just let your, let your hands go and catch it a little more freely, that will it's help nice. you feel better too. Dope, yep. we'll do. Yep. 225 or what are we doing? <laughs> yeah, let's do it, man. Let's do it. <laughs> you, you must be young, man. 40. All, right. all right. Again, your movement challenge is to make it look exactly like all your lighter sets. Cool. Don't change anything. Trust your technique. The other thing that I'll let my athletes do with these complexes, if you want to drop the bar in between any of the reps, that's fine. Okay. Grip strength should never be a limiting factor. Yep. Okay, that's, that should be a common theme. 
And this might also cause you to start pulling under it a little bit deeper and that's completely fine as well. Cool. Come on. Let's go, baby. Nice, come on. Dude, yeah, those uh, those front squats after they get your quads pumping, huh? Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Man, I was doing those. Ones. Sheesh. All right, here we go. I'm just gonna stand in a in a different position for you. Okay. So I gotta get the hook curve down. Yeah, and that that isn't necessarily something to introduce as you get heavier. I mean, you <laughs> use it as long as you can, and then revert back to what you need to. Cool. <sighs> And drop. I'm gonna yep. go no hook grip. Yep. <laughs> so goofy. Okay. And then this time, knuckles down in your setup. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Knuckles down. Way better, million times better. That was high. One. Two. Very good. Woo! Good. good stuff. How's that feeling? Good, yeah. The hook grip's messing me up a little bit. I don't know how to pull very strong with that, but I'll, I'll get that down. I'll show it doesn't you even hurt. Knuckles down. Yeah, like it, like it should almost be like a rotation. When I'm getting it close, my, I'm like, that's butter. that's different. Yep, butter. All right, here we go. Speaking of different, dude, check this check this technique out here, dude. The put, hair underneath. Yeah, yeah. Put, yeah. The, put the pony away. We had some uh, we had some hair issues. We got some uh, <laughs> Jesus like hair over here, and uh, it's been catching in the bar. Whew. We got a little, what? We got a little 947. It's ripping ripping hand clean PRs at 947. Yeah, I'm feeling. feeling what else can really you ask good. for, dude? Ooh, so now like that the, sauna in here, too. You do need the chop. so good, dude. Yeah. The, the intensity, right? Getting, getting into a, a dark place mindset wise before these is, is important. But a lot of times when people really try to grind through it, they shorten their pulse. Yeah. And they start chasing the bar. So if you're going to get into an ugly place, which I'm going to have to for this one, you just have to continue to rely on your full pull so that you can get into the bar a little bit smoother. I definitely rush that for sure. All right, come on, babe. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Get up. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Nice. Come on. Let's finish it now. Nice and easy. Up. Yep. Come on. Up. Good shit, dude. Let's go. That's, yeah, that's nasty. That's nasty. <laughs> yeah, you made that look fun. Yeah, ah. That's nasty. All right. Here we go. This is potentiation for our tournament on Saturday, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep, drop it whenever you have to. And get yourself through these movements. Let's do it. Come on. Come on. Good setup. Knuckles down. Yep. Good. Oh yeah, that was Good. a great one. That was terrible. Not not as bad as you think. I bet it looks a lot better on the camera. Here we go. Find a way here. Come on. Yep. Here you go. Reset. Elbows high. Big breath. Yep. Oof. Finish. Good. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Woo. That's Good a job. cranker, dude. Good job. Oh, man. That first one felt like trash. Yeah. It was just oh. all grip. It was all grip. So we had to switch over to the iPhone because my phone, or my camera died. So hopefully these mics are working, but we're going to go over one. What do we got? A uh, transition drill? Is yeah. That what we're doing? So, um, are we going to move this far to this one? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Do you want me to bump this one back? Yeah, that'd be perfect. Just be careful. It's going to be loud. I mean, not that it matters unless you have a bunch of kids sleeping in the house. <laughs> <laughs> a bunch of wild ones. Yeah. Perfect. So I, I talked about it a ton in the intro. I think the hook grip is so important, right? I think if, if you're going to train with cleans or snatches, Learning the hook grip and getting comfortable with the hook grip is something that really, really matters. Yep. The biggest thing that I see with athletes when they first start with the hook grip is going from the pull to the catch. So what I mean by that is if I have my hook grip on this barbell and I try to keep it when I catch it, 
Notice, and you'll be able to see this pretty good, but notice how my elbows right now are really low. Yeah. It just is a super, super tight position. So what fixes that is allowing the barbell to drift into your hands and losing your hook grip. Mm. Okay? So I start with the hook grip here. Okay? I hinge, and when I catch, I release the hook grip. Okay. So when you release the hook grip, it allows you to catch it into that front squat yeah, position. Yeah, that feels much more, much way better. better. When, way when better. I was adjusting off of that hands, that was that felt like money. It's just impossible. I shouldn't say impossible. There's some athletes that do it, but most people cannot keep the hook grip when they catch a ball. Yep, yep. yep. And with with the clean and jerk as a sport, you catch it, and then a lot of athletes will regrip. Regrip, okay. And then jerk. See, that's in, in high school. We always kept our grip because we'd always go into a jerk after. So it was always like just keeping it here, and yeah. then we'd go back into that. So that's interesting that they readjust from it. Again, the difference between using it for strength and conditioning and using it for sport. Yep. Right. When you use it for sport, you understand that in order for you to maximize your clean, you have to lose that hook grip. Yep. And then you have to get your jerk grip back. So uh, a little thing that I like to do, I like to do it with the empty barbell, okay? And all I'm doing is I'm hook gripping and I'm hinging and I'm catching and I'm just focusing on losing the catch. Yep. And then stand tall and you can feel it, okay? And then it weighs nothing, so it allows you to easily flip it, get back into that hook grip, knuckles down, catch, ooh, good. Just like that? Yep, nice. yep. And do that, do that at nauseum in your warmups. Yep overemphasize going from hook grip to non-hook grip. Hook grip to non-hook grip. And when you're getting to heavier weights, you just, like you even told me, it's like when you get to heavier weights, you're just going, right? Is yes. that kind of what you're doing? Yep, yep, without a doubt. We're not thinking at all about things once we pick up the bar and it starts getting heavier. Once you go. We're relying yep. on our technique. That's good to know, too, because that was for sure, when I was doing the heavier weights, I was trying to th keep that hook grip, and that was pretty tough, but when you said just like, at this time, now, now it's time to just go. Yeah, yeah, yeah without a doubt. And, and you've, you've alluded to it all this week about softball too, right? In BP, it's time to think about technique. When you get to the game, you're not thinking like, okay, I want to step here and I want to cut this through here. No, you're seeing a pitch and you're just going with it. Yeah. Same thing with the Olympic weightlifting. Yep. Work on the practice during the warm-up, but then when it's set time, just make sure that you're moving efficiently and safely and then just let it rip. Cool. I'll try this one out. Yep. So we're going here. Look right there. Good. Yep. And... and yeah, that looks, that looks good, I was gonna say. Uh, just make and sure. then what are you doing with these fingers? Are you still gripping there? Yeah, yeah, you're still wrapping around the bar, but yep. you're not squeezing, you're not squeezing hard. Gotcha. It's still somewhat loose in there. Okay, and hinge. Yep. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That, yeah, that exactly. felt nice, yeah. Okay, you're coming back. No, middle finger, yep. oh my goodness, I suck at this. And we're going here. Good, Ugh. yep, now do the exact same thing, and let me stand right here. Thumb over. Yeah, I got to put something in front of me when I clean. That, yeah. that, that'll be a, that's a really good constraint. Least favorite athlete for the week. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come over here and stand, bro. Throw him in front. Yeah. Oh, I messed up that transition a little bit. Okay, here we go. Oh, good. see, if I could keep it that yeah. vertical, that right. feels super nice. Yeah, that, Dope. Looked, that looked good. Yeah, I like that a lot. Cool, so it's just a drill. Work on it. Get really comfortable with it. Once the hooker feels easy and that transition feels easy, you'll be shocked at how much quicker your clean goes up. Cool. And then last thing probably we should cover is I suck at hinging. Not a good hinger. We were seeing that. Yeah. I try to turn everything into a squat. You have an athlete that's pretty squatty like me. What's kind of your approach to working on the hinge? Like what's your thought process there? Work on it more. Right? Yeah. I mean, it seems simple, but, but work on it more. The biggest thing that you're trying to get is the feeling. With, with this drill that we just did with the hook grip, when you did it correctly, you're like, oh yeah, that feel, felt good. Yep. Okay. With your hinge, you're going to naturally revert to a squatty hinge because that feels good. Yep. So you need to understand that when we hinge and load our hips and our butt, we might have a lot of tension on our hamstrings. We might like have shaky legs. That's what we're looking for right now yeah. because we need to strengthen our hinge through our posterior chain in that position. Okay, so again, something you can do. I'm, I'm just relating this to, to everything we're talking about. Naturally, when you're hinging, you're kind of hinging in this position, which is super squatty. Yep. Focus on rolling the knuckles down and then pushing hips and butt back. And if you get to the knee and you're not feeling the hamstrings engage, go a little deeper. Now I'm in this position, my hamstrings are on fire. And <laughs> you're ready to go for that. They're there. on fire. Yep. So let's say you get here and you're still not getting the hamstring um, feeling that you want. Now we can go to a snatch grip RDL. Much better even yet. Push, 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 push. Oh, I'm already really getting lit up. <laughs> go below <laughs> the knee. It's there. like, oh man. So my hammies are, are shaking right now because that's loaded up. That's yep. exactly where we want to be. Gotcha. So 
Work on the feeling. Work on your athlete feeling what it's supposed to feel like. No, and that, that, that feeling piece is really nice too because even I, I relate it to like the softball swing. It's like the first time I got the feel of that load, I was like, oh, that's, that's what it's supposed to do. And then you don't want to do anything else. So it's like you can preach it as much as you want, you know, like in anything that we're coaching. But once you have an athlete feel what you're talking about, I have been talking about this a lot on the YouTube because it's like we always do metrics, we do outputs, but it's like, we're missing a lot of like, again, that, that yin to the yang approach to strength conditioning, which is the feel, the, the non-objective, the non-measurables. And, I, and I, I relate it to this more too, because like once I felt that, there's no reason for me to go back to anything. So people have been telling me stuff all the time, but I felt it finally, and I found the drill that made me feel it. I'm like, oh, I'm never going to go back to the yeah. other one. And the same thing with the hinge where when I feel that, like, that, that constraint where you had me come back, I'm like, there's no reason for me to not... Yeah. Continue to work on that because yeah. now I'm like, that's the more efficient way. I, re I really like that kind of approach. Yeah. And your goal, once your mindset changes from, I want this movement to feel correct and I want to do it as correctly as possible. I don't just want to hit a number. I want to hit the movement correctly. Yeah. Once you have that approach, you'll understand there's little tiny things that you can work on to make it better. Yeah. And, and you've, you've talked about many things already in just this little session that I think is really, really cool. You said, oh, sometimes I jump forward. So what do we got to do to fix that? Knuckles down, load into our hinge a little bit better and, and be vertical. Yeah. That's an easy way to fix it. Oh, this hook grip doesn't feel good. Is there a drill that I can work on this? Yep. Takes three minutes. Do it every time you clean. Do it every time you snatch. Yep. I don't hinge very well. My hips, my hammies don't engage. What can I do? Oh, here's a couple of corrective exercises. Yep. It's all about searching for the proper technique to move the barbell as efficiently as possible. And having the, again, having the conversation with the athlete because like once you know the issue the athlete's feeling or having, you, do, you just put constraints in front like right away. Like, I, okay, I feel like I'm jumping forward or I am jumping forward and you're seeing that then instead of throwing random constraints or random drills at the athlete, it's like, I, I have that one, right? Like I have that drill in my bag to be able to stand. Or even if I don't have the constraint per se right away, it's like, I know you're jumping forward. How can I get you to not jump forward? And you can try a couple constraints there too. Cause that, that's the thing with the constraint that approach that a lot of coaches get confused with. They don't know how to like, it's like, well, I have all of these drills, all of these ways to do it now. How do I like implement it? It's like, well, that's, I'm just talking to your athlete and like seeing what's yeah. going on there, you know? Yeah. And like you were right away like, oh, this is what you're feeling. This is how we did not feel it that way. Yeah, simplify, okay? What we talked about at the very beginning when you asked, what's your approach to teaching Olympic weightlifting? I want to teach it as simply as possible so that people can use it right away. Yeah. Same thing with our cues. It doesn't do you any good as an athlete if I tell you the 15 drills that I know that are gonna fix this. That's, yeah. that's foolish, right? And I think a lot of times as coaches, especially in the Olympic weightlifting, when you get to the competition level coaches, they love being able to tell you how much they know. Yeah. But that oh, doesn't yeah. help the athlete, man. Yep. The athlete doesn't care how much you know. The athlete Athlete cares how to fix the problem they're experiencing. Yep. Right. So if you can give them exactly what to do, something tangible, something simple, something quick that they can imply right away, that, that makes such a big difference. Hell yeah. This is dope. Cool. You got anything else? No, no. Like I said, this has been a lot of fun. It, it's cool. It, it gets back to the roots of Olympic weightlifting. It's such a fun sport and, and anybody can do it. So it's something that I would encourage you to at least mess with a little bit, figure out ways you like it and what you like it for, and then just keep diving deeper into the movement itself. Dope, dope. Tomorrow we'll get some softball content in and we'll go from there. The, the real, the real fun the, stuff. The real fun yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Why we're here. Dope, dope. Peace. That was sick. <laughs>